Creating a study plan for the US simile is quite important. But the mistake I see most often is that people have this idea of there has to be one correct study schedule. But you see, there isn't one. There are multiple ways of getting from A to B, and while some of them are clearly more efficient than others, the fact of the matter is that there is simply no such thing as a best strategy for everyone. With that in mind, what I want to do with this episode of A Thinking Person's Guide to Use Simile Prep is walk you through the most important things to consider when trying to create a solid study plan. Again, not as a do this, 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 and this every day and this rest on Sundays, but rather as a series of principles, of tips, and things to keep in the back of your head in your mind so that you can go ahead and think, okay, a good schedule for me should look something like this. But before we begin, keep in mind that a lot of the stuff we'll talk about depends on the concepts we've reviewed in the other videos of this series. So if you haven't watched them, I suggest you go ahead and do that first. But anyways, the first thing you have to consider when creating a study plan for the steps is how much time you've got available. And this means taking into account not only how far you are from the exam, but also how dedicated your study can be. By factoring this, you end up with four common scenarios. First, the one who is relatively close to the exam and has all day to study. Second, the one who is relatively close to the exam and does not have all day to study. Third, the one who is far away from his exam and doesn't have all day to study. And finally, the one who is far away from his exam and has all day to study, which by the way is called unemployment. And that would be funny if that weren't my case. But anyhow, as we were saying, those are four scenarios. Those are the four scenarios. And you have to decide which one is yours. Because depending on which scenario you're in, your strategy should be slightly different. As a general rule, the guys that have all day to study should have a relatively well-organized schedule. And no, that doesn't mean they should have every hour of day pre-planned, but having some sort of daily order. For instance, something like in the morning, I'm going to solve a block of questions. In the afternoon, I'm going to read a few pages from this book, do some flashcards, and finally, in the evening, I'm going to rest. Something, something like that really helps you stay on track and avoid procrastination, which is something that tends to happen when you have all day to do just one activity. Now, in contrast, the guys that don't have all day to study obviously cannot schedule their day so easily, especially if the thing they have to do doesn't have a typical 9 to 5 schedule. And so my recommendation for people who are in these categories is to work with minimum needed goals. Minimum needed goals is basically just calculating a rough approximation of how many things you need to do each day or week to be able to stay on track. As an example, let's say you want to complete the first date and you world in six months while you're in medical school. The minimum needed goals to go through both resources is the number of questions and pages you have to review each day to be on track. Your goal then is to just try to check those goals any way you can. In this way, you're not chained to study in the afternoon or in the morning or in any particular schedule but rather whenever you have a bit of time available. Now, the minimum needed goals can be daily, weekly, or even monthly. So for instance, if on Sunday you couldn't study properly, but you made up for it in the weekend, as long as you're checking your minimum weekly goals, well, you're set. Okay, so once you have a rough understanding of the nature of your time constraints and a rough strategy to deploy accordingly, the next step is to decide and land your resources. Now, if you want to see a more comprehensive video on USMLE study resources to help you decide between them, I would suggest you watch this video right here when I go through each and every one of them. But for now, I just want to give you a couple of tips to choose them wisely. First, more is not always better. Using one or two resources thoroughly can prove to be much more useful than trying to squeeze four to five all at once. And that's especially true if fitting more resources into the mix makes you drop the quality of your study, which is something that a lot of people experience when they try to do this. And that leads to habits like going through the motions, reading without actually trying to understand what you're reading, rushing through the questions just to keep up with your daily quota, etc, etc, etc. So remember, more is better only when the quality of that more is up to par. The second tip I have is to lower your expectations, because people really tend to overestimate the amount of stuff they think they can go through in a given period. But this just leaves them stressed and thinking that if they don't finish everything they set as a goal, they'll fail in the exam, which just reinforces bad behavior, such as, again, rushing through the content. So don't do that. Try to be realistic, and if anything else, lower your expectations a little bit. A little bit more. Mm. Okay, once you've decided your resources, you have to land them to see if they're actually achievable. To do so, just divide the number of items in the resources between the number of days you have to study. If the end result that you have to go through 120 questions 
five videos and 30 pages each and every single day to be on track, buddy, you're probably not gonna make it. So again, lower your expectations. A bit more. That's more like it. Oh, and also remember, when landing your resources, use the denominator the days you actually have to study, not all the days in the week. So pre-plan ahead the days you wanna take off and make sure to not include them in the calculation. And while we're in this topic, as a general rule, I do suggest you have some free days whenever you're prepping for any type of big medical exam that has you studying for more than a couple of months. Because in my experience, if you don't give your mind time off, chances are she's gonna take it on its own and you'll start to procrastinate, become less and less efficient, and kind of had the time off you would otherwise have just mixed in with your working time, rather than in a separated form. And in my experience, that usually leaves people feeling pretty bad because they're neither being as productive as they would like, nor they're having the quality resting time that they would want. They just have this awkward, unproductive procrastination, self-loathing space. So overall, I think it's a better strategy to keep your productivity and leisure time clearly separated, to be truly efficient when you're studying and truly resting when you're not, not trying to do both things at the same time and failing in each one of them. Okay, once you have your resources and you've made sure that they are doable in the time you have, the next step is to start arranging them. At a macro level, a pro tip I have is that instead of arranging them in blocks, meaning one resource after another, you try to run them simultaneously. So for example, instead of watching the BMV videos and then jumping to solve questions, uh, try to do questions as you are reviewing the videos. In that way, you get to see how the stuff you're learning in the videos gets asked, thus helping you increase the depth of your understanding on the topic. And also that helps you revisit many of the topics you've read about in an interspersed manner, helping you retain the information for longer. And in fact, you can do this with pretty much every single resource. For instance, instead of running one QBank and then another, run them simultaneously. By doing so, you'll have two space repetition algorithms running at the same time. So whereas before with one QBank, it took you, I don't know, three weeks to repeat a given topic, now it can take you just two weeks. Again, helping you have more space repetition and an easier time memorizing everything. Once roughly organized, it's just a matter of delineating how your average day should look like to be on track and finish the resources you set up yourself to finish. Here the key is to keep it simple. Something like this in the morning and this in the afternoon usually does the trick. As an example, the average schedule I followed when prepping for step to ck was one of the blocks of your world in the morning and one of the blocks of Ambos with a review of Anki in the afternoon. That was it. Now, if you're a super rigid and conscientious person and you wanna schedule every hour of every day, go ahead. But keep in mind that those types of schedules take a lot of time to create and are usually pretty bad at handling life events. You know, stuff like, hey, the library got closed, you got sick, your world page just crashed. Those types of things ruin very easily those very rigid schedules. So do that at your own peril. Now, on the contrary, if you don't like or you can't have a regular schedule, try to work instead with minimum daily or minimum weekly goals, but just try to make sure that you actually have the time to go through the content, to go through the resources, because uh, you may end up with the habit of pushing your study saying to yourself, no, I can make it up later, I can make it up in the weekend or make it up in you know, other days. Uh, but as a general rule, I don't recommend doing that many days on a row because after a point you just can't keep up. So as a general rule, it's always better to stay on track every single day to the best of your abilities. Okay, once you've done all of this, it's time to do the last step, prioritize and personalize. Prioritization is the art of changing the day-to-day, week-to-week or month-to-month -month experience without actually modifying the absolute work you do overall. The typical example of this is imagine you have to read 10 pages a day for a week. Prioritization would make you read a few more pages some days and a few less other days, but at the end of the day, and at the, well, I mean at the end of the week, have you still hit the same 70 pages overall? The reason for why this is so great is because prioritization allows your schedule to maximize many other skills that normal strategies simply do not target. So for instance, one strategy that I often recommend to some of my very hard working colleagues is that in the last month of their prep, instead of studying 80 questions every single day and resting on Sundays, they solve, let's say, 240 questions on day one, review them on days two and three, take a day off, and then start again. 
And as you can see, the overwork is exactly the same in both cases. But given that you're forcing yourself to solve 240 questions on a single day, the second schedule also addresses your stamina, which I must say is a key skill to have for an exam that takes eight to nine hours to solve. This doesn't mean that everybody should study like this. In fact, I only recommend this type of periodization for the last few weeks of prep as a picking type of strategy for people who are up to it. But it is certainly not a routine that everybody can or should follow because it can quickly burn you out if you're not careful. But that was just one example of how you can use periodization. You can use it to maximize pretty much whatever you want. In fact, in my video on how I fixed my burnout, I explained that periodization was a key element that helped me fix and keep burnout at bay. And that actually reminds me that one thing you should keep in mind when creating a schedule is having a strategy, an active strategy to avoid burnout. Because believe me, that's the last thing you want to have when you're prepping for an exam such as, such as the USMLE. So I suggest you go ahead and watch that video in case you're interested. But anyways, that wraps it up for this video. If you have any questions, do let me know in the comments. But for now, that was it. Thanks for tuning in. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.